So this is a video I've kind of wanted to make for a while. So you might get the, have the question of uh, power versus heart rate. Like what is what is the metric we should be prioritizing? Um, and yes, there's lots of factors to consider and I'll get into those in the video. Um, but I think neither. I think at the end of the day, uh, they aren't directly affecting your performance. It doesn't matter what your heart rate is or what your power is. It doesn't matter if you're producing world tour numbers. If you're not getting across the line first, that it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So uh, you need to look at the demands of your event um, and what 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 actually gets you across the finish line first. Uh, and most of the time, that's going to be speed. And if it's a, a very hilly course, VAM. Um, so all the, these these factors, power, heart rate, extremely important. Uh, but they're only one aspect of the performance. And there's other there's other things to consider: core body temperature, blood lactate, cadence, CDA, um, and they also affect. Uh, can affect your performance, um, but we need to f focus on uh, focus on the goal at the end of the day. If we're training to to, to compete in races, uh, getting across the finish line in in X position is is going to be the most our most important the most important thing on your mind. Um, so if your training is not tailored towards that, uh, and you're just focused on your power numbers or your heart rate, um, then then you're missing out on some on some big gains. Um, like I said, I've got these. I've got those modalities that I've listed in the in the in the subtitle, uh, and I kind of broken them down into into several categories, and they are ranging in in importance to an extent. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of overlap between two and three, where uh, they all combine to to give the the, the effort. Um, but category one category one variables, I'd say these are head and shoulders above the rest because they are directly controlling uh, how you're how you're doing in the race. So, uh, like I said, for for a time trial and even a road race, like a road race is still just a time trial. It's a, whoever gets across the finish line first, whoever has the highest average speed. Um, how you can how you do that depends on depends on the race. Like you can in a, in a bunch sprint, you're just going to sit in the pack and then uh, sprint at the very end. Um, so it's that's why things like power is not just who's the strongest on the day; it's who has the best tactics to get the highest average speed at the end of the race. Um, so yeah, if you if you're neglecting looking at looking at speed, um, then that could be a, a really big shortcoming of your uh, of your racing. So uh, category one, I've got speed VAM, which is uh, vertical ascent meters per hour. So basically, how fast you, uh, it's a it's a speed metric to. Uh, work out to see how fast you're climbing you can have an intuition for how how fast you go on certain gradients uh, but it's just a, a VAM is just a function of gradient and speed really um, so if you know your speed and your gradient you can you can work out the VAM I mean it's it's literally just multiplying them together and then times them by 10 I think um, so if you're doing 10 kilometers an hour uh, up a 10% gradient you're gonna uh, cover a kilometer of vertical ascent in that hour uh, so times and get them together, it's uh, ten times ten, and then times ten again. Um, so a thousand meters of elevation. Also finishing position, like like I said, it doesn't it doesn't matter how you get to the in a, in a road race. It doesn't matter how you get to the finish line first, so long as you're there first. You could sit in and be be lazy all all race, and then just uh, sit in for the sp sprint finish, uh, or you can do it in a different way. Uh, but at the end of the day, that that position is what matters. That's what on what's on the result sheet if we're training to race like that's that's what we care about we don't it doesn't matter what your power is for the for the event like it might be very impressive what power you're able to produce but if you're not winning the race it's like okay you need to you should be deploying that power in a better way shouldn't you uh, speaking for experience um so yeah then moving on to cat two uh, I'd, I'd define these as like the physiological effort like um directly related to how we did in the performance um, so power is is an object assuming our power meter is accurate power is an objective metric of how hard we're pushing on the pedals um, and you can directly compare that to other p past performances to to get a best indication of of, of performance changes so uh, our, our heart rate might be exactly the same between uh, the 10 mile tt at the start of the season and the end of the season uh, but if our power has directly gone up, we know that uh, we've got stronger over time as the physiological effort uh, is objectively better. Um, and now power is is a is a function of cadence and torque. So you might want to isolate these separately for whatever reason. Um, but these are these are all grouped together, really. Um, but for, for like a track sprinter, they're going to be more focused on cadence because uh, they're that's that's the most measurable thing to them 
intuitively they've not got power meters on the bikes and they're running fixed gears i guess now there's some cda sensors to record this but um i'd put cda into into the physiological effort camp it is part of your performance at the end of the day like being able to hold a more aggressive position on the time trial bike is is part of your performance and um at the end of a time trial like it doesn't <laughs> no one cares what power you produce it's still how you finished like what was your what was your average speed and how did you finish uh how how is your finishing position and that's a direct uh directly related to your cda so uh if you if your power is super high like no one cares you need to that that means there's a there's an error with your cda if you're not if you're not winning those races so uh, it's a function of both moving on to to cat three i'd say this is like the, so this is the the physiological effort and this is the physiological response to the effort so how your body's actually responding to producing that sort of certain amount of power or that power in a in a, with for a given cda uh, and this is your heart rate your core body temperature and your blood lactate um, i'm sure there's other sensors on the market of uh, I'm, i think most sensors on the market are going to be in this camp as uh, other than other than power i can't think of like a, a direct way of measuring uh, our our physical our, our physiological effort this isn't directly related to your effort your heart rate could be the same but as you get fitter during the season for the given heart rate your power is better so you're producing a, an objectively harder effort because you're fitter um but the heart rate doesn't change as much um and generally we use these in 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 combination with with the physiological effort at the end of the day we'd always be going to the cat one uh, the actual result to, to to weigh up how good our performance was yeah the power the power versus heart rate is a, is a bit of a, a false dichotomy in my opinion like it's not really an argument that anyone's having is uh power meter is a fair, fair bit more expensive than than a heart rate monitor so typically if you have a power meter you're going to have a heart rate monitor as well and um Typically, people would prioritize the power more. That's the the metric they're going to be looking at a lot more. Um, but they're probably still going to have the heart rate monitor uh, on all the time as well. Um, and it's just it gives it gives both, uh, so you're able to just weigh them up and see see how your heart rate's responding for a given power. Um, and when used together, I think I think that's the way to go. And I think I assume most people uh, that you, I doubt there's many people that just rely on power and either don't wear a heart rate monitor or don't care what that heart rate monitor is saying um so yeah it's 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 not really a, th a thing that people are weighing up just because of the cost discrepancy with this being a lot cheaper and equally i don't think there's as many camps who are who are just using heart rate and don't care about power um you might bias there's definitely camp bias where you'd bias one more than the other um so like going out for a zone two ride are you prioritizing just being bang in the middle of your zone two at your 250 watts or whatever or are you more focused on your heart rate and making sure that that heart rate stays at 130 bpm and if the power has to come down to to achieve that 130 bpm or uh or go up then then that then that's the case um i think i'm probably more so in the heart rate camp of uh keeping things more making sure i'm more under control and i'm not stressed this is for zone two riding um where i'm not so as stressed about the power but that's mainly because of like my approach to zone two and uh, making sure i'm not overdoing it really power is 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 a great metric for training and probably best, better than heart rate objectively um but you kind of don't want to get too obsessed with it as you if you get too obsessed with I've, I've mentioned this before where if you get too obsessed with power it can lead to burnout as you 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 can structure a training session and think you have some certain progression in the power um but adaptations don't work like that you don't know you're going to be better for that next session uh, and therefore like forcing the power out maybe isn't going to be good for you so that's where um having some having some intuition for how your body's responding to the session and looking at uh other 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 factors like how your heart rate's responding in the session uh and and knowing when to adjust the power as uh rather than just forcing it out uh, so yeah, power is fantastic for training to uh, to hit stick to your zones. But uh, again, coming back to speed, like uh, it doesn't matter how much power you're producing. It doesn't matter how impressive your interval sessions are and how much power you're producing. If if you're not going fast, then it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, you need to. I think part of your training should be getting some sort of intuition for uh, what's fast and so looking, being aware of what speed you're doing for uh, for a certain wattage and. 
uh, that comes in on the flat that would come into your CDA, uh, but then also for your climbing, like what what a, what a high VAM looks like for you uh, when you're doing 400 watts going up a, a 5% gradient, what VAM does that represent? Um, as that's that's the actual metric that, that matters for getting you across the line first because like there might be if you think about it there might be could be an issue with your bike where you've got like a rubbing brake pad and let's say you had a rubbing brake pad and you didn't realize that uh, and you're you're bashing out the these efforts doing doing world tour power but then you're not actually going as fast as uh, as your competition uh, as your competitors um so you need to be aware of like what a good vam is and if you're if you're doing like really good power but the vam's not there you need to be, and you're 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 a, a, a sensible sort of weight you need to be like okay is there something wrong with the bike and just sanity checking that sort of thing it's it's looking at all the variables and being like okay is my power meter over reading is my heart rate monitor broken um, and all that sort of things but and there can always be issues with with the tech that we buy like uh, whereas speed as long as your gps is accurate the speed and the VAM, that's the most, and, and race results, race results is, is as objective as it gets, but these are the most objective metrics where we should always fall back to these, like, it doesn't matter how, how good your power meter is saying you're going, like, if these are still low, then there might be an issue with your power meter, for example. Um, so yeah, I think they, I think you need to include some sort of speed training and maybe like hill, hill repeats and seeing what your VAM is. Uh, in your training just to get an idea of it don't doesn't need to be all the training like you don't need to do it all all out and back cda tests um but having a having a perception of what's fast for a given power that you can produce um just so you have that that better intuition then when you're going into the race you like know what know what's fast because because when you're racing speed speed is the ultimate metric so it, it, but like i say you don't need to do this uh cda testing for for all the training you're doing that's i'll just be overkill um and once you've done a little bit to get an intuition for what's fast and what's not uh, you can just train to power where um because the thing is what's great about training's power and training to heart rate um the conditions uh, it kind of normalizes for conditions uh, where it doesn't matter the terrain you're going over uh, if it's more hilly than usual higher wind worse cold, colder air um, you're going to be those are those are going to cause you to be slower on the bike. Uh, however, it all gets normalised because uh, you're you're produce it's it, you're looking at the power you're producing. The speed for a given interval doesn't matter because we're looking at how hard it was physiologically through how much power we're producing or how high our heart rate got. Um, but yeah, we just need to remember that we're <laughs> if we're racing, we're racing to speed. So um that power that power you can throw that power and the heart rate out the window if you're not going fast so generally i'd say you train to power but then you'd also take into account other factors like your heart rate uh to validate what you're seeing so validating your heart rates lining up with what you're seeing from your power meter so uh, if your power meter is off the charts but your heart rate's well under control um you need to be like okay am i just stupidly fit here or is my power meter over reading uh, and just giving you that sanity check and i kind of that's what dylan johnson's video was talk with steven seiler was kind of about uh, with uh, when when to prioritize heart rate it's like um okay if you you don't want to overcook yourself because over the course of the a zone two ride your um your heart rate's going to creep up for the same power so maybe you want to let that power fall off to keep the heart rate under control so you're not inducing too much fatigue from that zone two ride when it's meant to be like a an easy midweek ride before a session the next day and uh, how's that going to affect your session the next day when you've uh, gone out and absolutely smashed it accidentally on a zone two ride yeah as i mentioned i think i think the power the cat kind of the cat two the physiological effort the power mainly the power <laughs> um that's it's it's very usable data as it normalizes for conditions like doing it doesn't matter where you're doing your 400 watt interval um i mean some people some people it they, they do better going up hills but um you can do a 400 watt interval on 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 a flat section of road and a hilled section of road uh, and you don't need to be as concerned about trying to uh, weigh up what was which was the faster interval based on the based on the gradient because you've got the power to do that for you um and it also allows you to compare between races so conditions are never going to be never going to be same even if you're doing the same same time trial course like the conditions are going to be different on the day with uh, airspeed uh, wind uh, 
temperature uh, and all those factors so it also adjusts for conditions so that you can uh, like evaluate those performances to see um as it's like the uh, an objective metric we have for if we're improving physically um so if that that power's going up from uh, the start of season race to the mid season race you know it's also really useful for tracking performance outside of race efforts you don't need to yes that cat one cat one effort of how you did in the race and 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 your your average speed and your finishing position that's the most important thing um but we're not racing we're not racing constantly we need to uh, and and looking at power and tracking how how we're doing in our sessions week to week month to month uh, that gives us a, gives us a good idea of fitness uh, so then we can take that to the races um, and hopefully see uh, if you know that the training's been following an upward trend uh, then hopefully we should see the same when we go go and actually go race our bikes yeah like Obi-Wan said remember the purpose of your training <laughs> like uh, it's all well and good training to power and seeing this this really nice increase in power week to week month to month that's a really good sign that you're that increase in training, increase in fitness is going to result in a better performance. Uh, but it won't it, it doesn't always necessarily. We need to, if your position on the time trial bike, if you're producing more power, but your position on the time trial bike to produce that power is gradually shifting and moving to a less advantageous position, uh, and it's making your CDA worse. Your power might be up, but your your, your the time might be worse even even accounting for conditions it might have been a objectively worse performance um even though your power was better and that's because it's come at the detriment of your cda so that's why in training you need to remember to remember to fo the focus of what you're doing this for um and if you've if you found a, a way to improve your power but it comes at the detriment of something else then you need to really consider that as if your goal is to do a fast time trial uh it doesn't matter if your if your power goes up or your cda goes down uh, they both increase performance you can't neglect one or the other uh, i mean it goes the other way you can't just completely slag off your slack off your training and and think that you're just going to get reliant on uh, improving your cda as as you still need to still need to push the pedals to get around the course so um yeah it's 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 weighing things up and uh that cda and and power are both uh, cat 2 variables that uh, combine to uh, combined to give like a, a really good representation of what that cat one variable is of, of how you're going to do on the day of what your average speed's going to be for, for a time trial for example. On YouTube or Instagram you might have seen that some people will say these things about uh, this is the next big I guess these are kind of the next big thing um, where a certain a certain wearable device or usable device is the is the best thing to train to um, but at the end of the day like uh, these top athletes, so Christian Blumenfeld, Jakob Ingebrigtsen, and Tadej Pogacar, like they're all they're utilizing all of the tools at their uh, at their dispense. Like um, they're not. Yes, they might seem to be biased to one camp rather than the other, uh, but they're going to be used, utilizing everything and looking, leaving no stone unturned, and looking at every single variable. See, if you watch Christian Blumenfeld's YouTube videos, you see that they're extremely tight knit with the with the core team. Uh, and he's doing a lot of tests with the core stuff, and and I don't I, I don't think that's complete bullshit. I think maybe they 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 do value the core, uh, and they've got a really good relationship with the team. So um, and by by focusing on one variable and Ingebrigtsen really focused on the lactate testing, like the classic Norwegian method, uh, fixating on one, it's maybe it, maybe it's not bullshit. Maybe that's what they actually do. Uh, they'll, they'll be recording the others definitely. Uh, but they're more focused on one as is if you're hyper fixated on multiple it could muddy the waters and get get a bit too complicated and uh, i doubt i doubt if you're if you're test if you're measuring both there uh, you're going to get something wildly different from one sensor compared to the other uh, but it could get a bit more complicated if you're trying to optimize for or body temperature and lactate for example say in terms of these these sensors like the only invasive one that takes additional time is, and is disruptive where you have to stop and uh, prick your skin to to measure the blood is the lactate testing um other than that like the core sensors non-invasive heart rate monitors non-invasive there's no real downsides to wearing the others and so maybe you want to uh, if, you, if you really focus on the lactate testing you've, you've you, there's no downside to having the background of of your core your core body temperature or your heart rate i know for a lot of cycling teams they'll focus on doing some lactate testing at the start of the season 
uh, but then when it comes to mid-season it's uh, they're more focused on just getting the training done as um, it's, it's it's a bit too disruptive to to do after every single effort be constantly checking your lactate but obviously works for uh, if you're being really diligent about working at that free zone model and staying in your lt2 zone i think these are all useful and have your place but um don't get don't don't think that one of them's the magic bullet is there's always going to be a new thing that comes around the corner of oh, we should be focusing on this we didn't know this whole time uh but yeah it's like the, these these new the new tech can be useful um but I don't think there's anything that's going to be a magic bullet. It's the the holistic approach, the combination of everything that's gonna that's gonna help you. And like I said, these top guys are, are utilizing everything. So I category categorize like these as cat free variables. So it's like the physiological response to the effort that we're doing. So heart rate, core body temperature, and lactate. Um, and maybe it's more uh, something Pogacar was saying in his interview with Atia was about how uh, he kind of relies on heart rate more than. <laughs> More than power, and partly that's using the Shimano power meters that are notoriously inaccurate. Putting a multiplier on when you're in this in the small ring compared to the big ring, rather than actually just recording recording power, it's it's knowing that there's an offset for uh, when you're in different chain rings and applying that based on where the derailleur thinks it is. It's power, power meter is the best of training, but when when the power meter is inaccurate, that's thrown out the window, um, and that's kind of why. Pogacar was maybe maybe saying that he he values heart rate more and uh, at the end of the day like that uh, I I do sometimes think this with the phys- the the heart rate is like your physiological response to the effort that's what your body's feeling that's what that's surely that's that's what the adaptations are being driven from like how your body feels day to day the power doesn't matter and that's kind of why I'm in the camp of not forcing the issue on on a session like i i know intuitively how a threshold session should feel to me and if i'm having to push push too hard to hit an arbitrary power target then that session is going to be harder than it should have been and then the recovery aspect of that session is 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 is, is skewed um so what we're getting from the core temperature the heart rate and and the blood lactate like that could that could I could see that not lining up with what you're getting from your power meter, but that's our physiological response to the effort. That's what our body has to adapt from. Um, so maybe it is more important. So uh, maybe there is uh, more to be said about the the power versus heart rate debate. But I think that all all of that comes into looking at both and having a keen eye for uh, evaluating them against each other. So if you're doing your session and your heart rate's higher than expected for for a given given training zone then uh, you need to think think about why that might be and uh, potentially readjust as like i say our body our body doesn't know how much power is producing for at that interval all we all the all we know is how it felt and that's what we're adapting from the downside of of these variables is it it will confirm that you can work hard in a session so uh, if you're consistently getting to really high heart rates and high core body temperatures high blood lactates that shows us our, we worked hard but it's not the same as more objective metric to see that we're actually improving. So uh, you could you could train for for ages and see really good metrics from uh, from these cat free variables, uh, but you need to still weigh that up against against a race or even against a power meter to see that uh, the training you're putting in is resulting in improvements. And you can skip skip the skip, step of the heart rate monitor uh, of the power meter and go straight to a race and uh, and see that improvement. But yeah, it's all going to come back to cat one for for evaluating your training. But if you have a power meter, you have that a, a better grasp of if you're improving week to week, month to month, as is the training being effective. Uh, if you're seeing a nice increase in power for a given duration, um, but at the end of the day, like you still need to uh, at some point evaluate that against race conditions and see if you're you're actually improving your average speed and your van for your for your races as like that's what that's what matters i'm I'm not slagging off any of this tech i mean i use i use most of these things i i really use my heart i've been using heart rate monitor for eight, for years and years and uh I'm, I'm starting to use the core body temperature sensor and uh i have issues with it but i i do think it can be a, a very effective tool for improving the training uh and, and same with the, same with the power meter i think using a holistic approach of getting an idea of uh, how they how these variables interact with one another is the key for for training and i feel like most people probably think that but
it's maybe prioritizing some some different aspects at different points in the season um so for example if it's getting really hot um then don't be concerned as much about your power and your heart rate as you know that the power is typically going to come down the heart rate's going to go up but if you're focused on doing a heat training block to get heat adapted then focus on what what the core sensor is telling you if you're at a stage in the season where you're really focused on doing like tempo work so your LT2 uh, and and you've got access to a, a lactate monitor then make sure that you're staying and you've done some uh, a, a lactate threshold test where you you know where your LT2 LT1 and your LT2 are uh, then making sure you're staying religiously in that LT2 like the Ingebrigtsen method the Norwegian method does uh, that's going to be the focus of the training and then when it comes to races like you you've got a power target of what you want to do to produce a certain amount of speed for a given CDA so during your training you're looking at hitting hitting those intervals at as target wattage uh, as you know that you can combine that with the CDA that you can hold on race day uh, to do the best performance and 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 improve your category one variable of your speed your VAM uh, and your ultimately your position of how you do in that race so yeah, it's 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 taking all of them into account. You maybe utilizing prioritizing one over the other at different points in the season, uh, but yeah, they all combine to to give give the result that you get at the end of the day, um, and that result is what matters. So make sure you're focusing on your speed.